All right, welcome everyone. We're Semblance of Sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we're here for Summertime, Summertime Rendering, episode 13. 13. Holy shit, we had like the perfect mid-season finale. Mm -hmm. And also the perfect reset point. Uh, uh, like, we can't like, hope it, for a better reset point other nope. than just going back a day or two earlier. But, right, they literally saw but Shadow for advancing Ushio time, appear. Yeah, uh -huh. for advancing time. Yep. For bringing Ushio with him, mm -hmm. for having all this line up with when he's giving the info to Nezu and yep. Hizuru. This oh, yeah. is um it's uh, th this you, is you couldn't have asked for more. So now it's the okay, where do we strike from a position of of knowledge and power? Mm -hmm. We can yep. go after the Ishigata just clinic in general. Right. Maybe like, maybe find that quite priest. There. You know, I, I feel like I feel like that would yeah. be rather apropos. I feel like the priest has moved into the back of their minds of like, like they're they're trying to you know Gandalf writers of Rohan us with it, but like no no that no they're not. No. It's just it's just a thing that they'll they'll remember at some point of like hey yep. what, what what do you think his his grandparents or his mm -hmm. family has in terms of info and knowledge and lore about the shadows. They'll get to the point where they're like okay this shit's too important. We don't give a fuck about his schedule. Like whatever, whatever stuff he had planned for today, nah, <laughs> clear it. Like, clear it. The more important stuff is happening right now. Right. The scary thing is that because of how close things got to not just a victory for both sides in the mm -hmm. previous episode, but given that it is parallel worlds, it is yep. something where the eye is not just a physical eye. Well, no, it's not just a a thing that allows you to reset upon death. Mm. It's an actual key to time, multiverse, observation yep. powers. It is the powers of a god. Right. Shinpei, you just don't know how to use it. We now have a very clear track as to how Shinpei will not only get better at using it, but then... At some point, go way back into the at past. At some point, get way back in the past. that whole bird's eye view thing... Is something that's... he's been doing since a mm -hmm. long time. And yep. also, whether or not moving through time will end up mattering at a certain point because it's sure. more that he'll just be able to observe all time yeah yeah so yeah that's probably uh -huh. end of the series kind of stuff where he can then yep you know kind of put everything into place maybe even maybe even do some moving of ushio or stuff like that we'll see it's we gonna will. be crazy but y'all without further ado let's get into this crazy that it's only been five yeah this is the beginning Oh. Yep. You're alive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But didn't you see her just appear with me right now? Yeah. Come on. Yep. Mm -hmm. Cool. And they tell him everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Just like that. Okay. Wait, what? They just get a download of everything up until now? Well, yeah, because we don't know fully what Hizuru is. Oh, okay. Hizuru is still a little bit of a mystery. Mmm. しおりの足元の影はその一部に過ぎあんなら、しおりをいくら殺しても死なんかった説明がつか。ガチや。ああ。しおりの戦闘能力は高くない。あるんだけど。すぐにでも地下に潜って、本体を叩きたいですけども、
There's not many kids or no. young people left in this story, really. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. だから、その経路を逆にたどったら。ねずさんから聞いたんです。14年前、龍之介さんが影に。いや。うん。ちょっと待ってください。首を絞められた跡があったことが。龍之介さんを殺したのは背根なのでは。そうだ。いや。そし
I think it's because it's the true form of the uh, of the god, basically. Like, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Feels weird. You're holding me so right, entirely. Right. Yeah. Oh no. Where did we loop to? Wait. It usually doesn't advance when it's this fast after. Yeah. Yeah, what's going on? Did Hane mess with it? Oh, that too. Oh, did they go back real far? Yeah. Oh, shit. How? So I guess he's getting better with the, the eye? Oh. Oh. Oh, shit. We're just Bird's observing. View. We're yeah. just observing. This isn't, the loop isn't done yet. Mm-hmm. Now, if Haine was her friend, then... Uh-huh. Yeah, you saw... You saw the beach, yeah. 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 Oh. Yeah. うん。人が多くて不快なので帰ります。ちょっと待った。まさかいや。ここでのおめでたい日やろ。みんなで祝うらよ。祝うのにみんなで騒ぐ必要さを感じや。She's <laughs> And another guy, though. Oh, is that his dad, potentially? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. He kind of has a Shinpei look a little bit. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Uh -huh. It's dad, yeah. 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 Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh shit. Okay. Because they had a, a boating accident. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, a way to get down into the cave? Yeah, yeah. Even though it's covered. They were, in... they were yeah, investigating they... things without even necessarily realizing it, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Just looking into the history of the So town they could have been killed by shadows as well. Yeah. They might have discovered Haine's spot. Yeah. Shit. And that's Haine. Okay, okay. <laughs> oh, right, because Haine is such an old shadow. She wouldn't have been alive here. She still would have been a shadow. Right, right. No, of course. Yeah. Oh, oh, here's the Shit. memory. She was just thinking about when they met. Oh, no, no, no. This is this is in the future from the previous memory. So they're... Right, right, right. Huh. <laughs> they're like, okay. Okay. Yeah, she's not coming out because there's others here. That's right. Why. Yeah. Once they left. Wild. And yeah, both, both eyes. eyes. Yep. Yeah. Uh-huh. Damn. Okay. All right. Okay. Wait, we we have we have a problem here. We, we have a problem. <laughs> and something that... got followed, mm -hmm. and it's because of the mark. Yeah, yep. that, that was a recent thing in terms of iterations. So. Right. That that was that yeah. that kind of blew my mind because I I thought that the mark was like, since it was so many episodes ago, I figured right. it was like a while ago as far as iterations, but no. It was actually the previous iteration. So, like, yeah, there, 
Yeah, the previous iteration was so good in terms mm -hmm. of how much they were able to do yep. that uh, we just assumed, right. yeah, that, so, that's not, right. an, it's not an immediate issue. And the whole reason why we were thinking, no, it can't possibly be that, is because surely we would already be screwed if that were a thing that she was capable of doing. But nope, because she hadn't actually marked you in those previous times, now she has. Mm -hmm. So it, she knows exactly where you're going exactly to be. She knows exactly where you are. This is going to get a lot harder. It's going to get a lot harder, but it also means we're going to get a lot more looping because Shinpei, while he can be found, mm -hmm. Hiroko and by extension Haine and Shiori and the forearm and everything there, they can't just be everywhere. No. They and are actually a limited personal antagonistic force that yep. can only be in those three locations. And we know mm -hmm. Haine's going oh, yeah. to be sitting underneath the mountain way down there in the cave just chilling and being like keep feeding me i'm gonna make hiroko stronger over the course mm -hmm. of time and then we have shiori who is the scout part going around right. and you know looking around and stuff uh -huh. and then we have forearm here who is probably just a pretty just clear direct extension of some aspect of hiroko's power mm -hmm. and that's the most fearsome thing we no have to deal with for it or and whatever. that's why there's no data for it that's but yeah, th yeah. there are there are so many things that this changes mm -hmm. because like yeah. we've had a, we've had a fair number of rules so far of what mm -hmm. we have to have in order to like for the protagonist in, in order to how how to move forward and everything right mm -hmm. you need to keep ushio with uh shimpei right mm -hmm. so that that way she can be brought back in right. future iterations also so that there's a convenient person who is literally a weapon that can kill him whenever yeah. so that that way you don't have to worry about him being taken captive yeah but now that they have his location you can't have Shinpei actually be doing the important stuff. Well, you can. Like you, you just have to move fast. Yeah, you have you have to move fast. You have to keep moving. And but ideally, you would have Shinpei be a decoy mm -hmm. where he's yep. doing something that is important. Right. But then, meanwhile, you can have Nezu and Hizuru go watch off and him. do their thing, or watch him, or whatever. Right. Yeah. And that can be a that can be a fun way that we make it. Well, so how they handled Mio in one of the previous. Oh uh, right, there. right. Yeah. So that even though we got like a a perfect reset point that one time, right. Yeah. Even if, even if, say, after this whole going way back deal, yeah, we go we're back now to in that observation point. mode here. Where we're we're bird's eye viewing here, where he's actually using mm -hmm. the ability the way it's meant to be used, which yep. is not just rendering out the, you know, the present into the future and all that, but it's the no. He's going back and observing mm -hmm. key moments of yep. Hizuru's memories here, mm -hmm. which I just gotta say. There's some stuff going on with her and her brother in terms of the way that they're connected to Heine. So there's there's yeah. some there's some things we're gonna get revealed here. They're gonna be really big because we've been going off of the um, mostly kind of deduction based um, assumption that uh, the way that the uh, personality shift with the kind mm -hmm. of hair up versus hair down for Hizuru thing works is that there is some aspect of her brother becoming a shadow. Right, and then like... That then gave her access to the ability to see a little bit into the future. Mm -hmm. But we know that it's a brother-related thing because she only uses that when it's him, when mm -hmm. it's... When it's uh, and yet, Rinosuke. physically, she is still human because we've seen her die many times and she bleeds, she, you know, all of that kind of stuff. Right, except that there's some things that were introduced in this episode that calls, I would say, the whole thing of what she is into question a little bit more, which okay. is that Ushio downloaded and transferred memory to her, which, when she was in the Hizuru form, Hizuru form yeah. which, again, reminder, it's not a form shift. It's just a, I put the hair up and put the hair down. It's I'm putting right. on the personality, the persona right, but of there's, those people. But there's some aspect of that that does give her an actual shift in power. Hence well, needing to do it in the yes, first Yes, because place. actually when you do a persona shift like that in the real world, there are people that actually revert back to being kids. There are people that basically take on the form of adults and stuff. And you'll see them start to tap into their muscles and things like that because they know, oh, I am that strong. I can use this. You no, know, right. So, but, but that's the it's the it's the whole thing of either she's a human that has power that is locked behind the persona DID persona of yeah. her brother. That's that's we know that's the case in some level. But but then the idea that Ushio could potentially tap into that shadow part of her in some right, ways. Right. There's some there's to some network the it, data. Exactly. There's some shadow and not shadow shenanigans happening at the mm -hmm. same time. Or not at the same time, but within the same body. Within the right? same body, right. Yeah. And we don't exactly know how that works, but 
Right. It doesn't quite work the way that we thought. Because well, do, Shadow's doing... It doesn't work doing, the way that we thought, yeah. But Shadow's doing knowledge transfer. That's, that totally makes sense. That's absolutely but, on the table. But we didn't get a sense that Nezu got that same knowledge download, no. right? She, she well, shook no, hands with Hizuru. Touch. Yeah, there was a touch, touch with, yeah. with Hizuru. And yeah. so that's, that's how it happened. But, and also, this is another thing. Sh dude, that can't be done with humans. It literally cannot mm -hmm. be done with humans. There are yeah. so many times in the past where Ushio could have done this. Right, like she could have done it, like... At the very beginning of the show. Like, uh, for, well, yes, that too. Yes, that would have, yeah, the, the whole show would have fallen apart if, if she had been able to do that. But right. then but then also the whole bit where uh, Haine was able to mark Shinpei mm -hmm. was because she couldn't do something like that. And so it's the, well, I'll recreate it to show mm -hmm. you guys as opposed to shake your hand, shake your hand. You right, know? right. Yeah. Therefore, she's not fully human. Mm -hmm. That's, 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 right. that's 100%. She bleeds, but she's got some shadow aspect. Right, right. And mm -hmm. that's something where I want to bring up the idea that if we're going into a Hizuru and Haine backstory, mm -hmm. there is some aspect of them being connected to each other. And Haine is not human, mm -hmm. but Haine here has Ooh. both eyes. Yeah. Okay, so here's I want to bring up I want to bring up the idea that Haine here is not the is not the Heine that we know because Heine hasn't had the eye stolen yet. Well, right, because well, are you talking about like in like a literal sense or in like a metaphorical sense, like personality wise, maybe because Rinosuke is the one bit. that stole the eye. Well, I believe. I believe well, that's this is this is where I think we're going to have a reveal as to actually what exactly happened. Okay. Because Hizuru told us that Heine killed Rinosuke. Mm -hmm. That's why when we remember the memory from like episode yep. two or whatever it was, or maybe even episode like one or two, um, she screams Heine when mm -hmm. she's looking over her brother's body. Right. And I believe Heine mentioned in one of our first like interactions with her that Ryu that uh Ryunosuke was the one who stole the eye. Rinosuke is the brother though. No, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Like and that's that's the that's the weird bit because I I have to go back and check that because well, that's yeah okay that calls into question a whole bunch of other things unless unless uh unless Hizuru stole the eye replaced her own with it and then afterwards made another copy of her eye and maybe that's where she gets the limited future like there's a lot of mm -hmm. potential and like, the other thing is that the eye is filled is made up a bunch of shadows mm -hmm. the eye is not the actual eye the eye is a copy. No, right, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, 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 I know, but that's a huge thing because then we don't know where the original is. No, right. Well, uh, I think it was mentioned that, like, the original is just being kept off the island somewhere. By who? Well, by Hizuru. Right, right, right. Because, right. because it's then the, then why, did, why would you act, bring no, the actual No, 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 no. I, I know, yeah. I, I get that, but then mm -hmm. how did how did the copy get into Shimpei's Well, the, the, the way that it would have got, well, I mean, directly, Ushio put the copy into Shimpei's No, no, head. obviously, but, but then how, how did, did she, she get, get it? it? Because, um, given, so, uh, whether or not the, uh, it's a personality aspect that's the shadow, or whether it's an actual shadow of her brother that is inhabiting her or something like that, the Ryunosuke shadow, right, is the, th he's a shadow, and that's how they were able to, um, to get the shadow make a copy of the eye in the first place right that's where we that's where we know there's some shadow power right okay then from there i think we're taking a couple leaps here but i i'm, I'm following okay. kinda then from there whether it was directly to ushio or something else right i'll you know although i believe right. we know that ushio did reach out to hizuru so there's a possibility of that happening right when she was like trying to get help and things like that there's also a point where Shadow Ushio is interacting with regular Ushio, and there's memories that haven't been accounted for from the point after where Haine through, you know, right. Hiroko, which Ushio, all that destroys um, yes, a which, regular Ushio, which and makes, also ruins the memories of Shadow Ushio at well, that point. If she was the one who ruined the memories of Shadow Ushio. Uh, the the big reason why we assumed that it must have been Haine, as the show was leading us to believe, is because... Um, if Heine can't have memories outside of different time loops, then there would be no reason really to have um, memories be erased for the purpose of keeping them safe because it would just protect basically the one iteration. But if that happened, if if one of the enemy shadows were able to take the memories, that means you're already kind of screwed and you'd need to reset. So unless Heine was able to 
have permanency of memories and things that she gleaned, there would be no need to do that because then you just reset. She doesn't know anything and you have all the information, right? Right, so but we know for a fact that... That Heine can. Can, So yeah. as a result of that, that means that it's back on the table that Ushio mm -hmm. and, and any of the people that she was working with, shadows, things like that, would basically be intentionally altering memories and removing selected memories so that that way, in none of the iterations, can Heine actually figure out what the plan is. And that's right. and that's the that's the way in which it makes sense for this story to have all of these complications on the side of the protagonists that are introduced by the protagonists themselves because otherwise the 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 plan goes tits up, right? Like it doesn't mm -hmm. actually work. Yeah, and this is where and this is where on some level we are not basing this on evidence of the show bringing it up. It's the idea that the show is giving us such limited information on certain mm -hmm. things that we are having to take things that we could see as plot holes as basically the well no, they're not plot holes because we're going to assume no plot holes until the show literally ends. Right. When you have a time travel show. So mm -hmm. y'all bear with us in that when you yeah. have a time travel show, there's going to be plot holes. Most shows basically do not have the writing capability to basically put everything in such simple, straightforward world building terms that the logic of it doesn't break down or you go into the characters just being stupid because of, right. they didn't think like, about the thing that the audience thought about. Like you know? one of the one of the examples of this that I don't mm -hmm. think is really going to be an issue. And if it and if and if this is the only kind of thing that they that they gloss over, you know, from the standpoint of like the time travel making sense yeah. and whatnot, mm -hmm. is the fact that now there should be multiple shadow ushios, right? Because well, no, that, that's the why I was saying that there, there's 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 basically a point where shadow ushio is going to time travel in the future into the past, mm -hmm. but hold on, hold on, hold on. Shadow ushio right now is not actually doing time looping. No. Shimpei is she's just hopping on to no, that right. thing there and is thus getting um mm -hmm. three non-literal visual representation the data at the very least getting assimilated into the past and being projected out into a form here and thus there would not be any previous shadow ushios because all of those shadow ushios are the same ushio that's moving forward through time along so, with Shimpei. But the one that gives the eye to Shimpei in the beginning has to be a time traveler. Okay, no, no, no. yeah, separate from any eye stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. The only way that the uh that there wouldn't be multiple Ushios, shadow Ushios right now, uh -huh. and that it and it's and it's not a plot hole, right? Is if the when the time loop stuff happens, it's not like you were saying, it's not that Shadow Ushio is actually getting pulled back. It's the data being pulled back, mm -hmm. which then goes back to the actual Shadow Ushio. Mm -hmm. But that Shadow Ushio, because of the data that was being sent back, is able to render herself instantaneously at in a different location. Mm -hmm. She's able to basically teleport, mm -hmm. which we've never seen a Shadow do. No, 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 that's because Ushio's, Ushio's a magical girl. We yeah. don't have to put limits on what Ushio can do other than... I mean, hey, if it gets established at some point in the future that Shadow Ushio can teleport, great. No, that... you're, you're, you're getting pedantic with this here. The point is is that she's not doing the actual looping. She's going through a wormhole that Ush that Shinpei is basically allowing her to piggyback off of. No, but it doesn't It doesn't matter. If you have, like, if, if you've got, you know, the, the, the forking, like, parallel realities and all that stuff, right? And Ushio from this one goes back into this one. Right now, there's two shadow Ushios here. No, no, because and if she was able to teleport, then that would mean that shadow Ushio currently is actually able to teleport no. because that's what would have been happening. No, because because so and I'm not saying that this is a big no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm basically saying that it's just literally not the case because shadow Ushio has been since she's come back kind of miraculously at the beach, uh -huh. she's been jumping alongside Shimpei this whole time. Yeah, so none of those iterations if you will have an ushio just sitting there waiting around just chilling doing nothing no but they they would no they they, they wouldn't that's that's so, that's the point i'm bringing up no yeah. so uh at the at the at the beginning point shadow, which is uh the beginning point where shadow ushio doesn't exactly know who she is the, the beach yeah the beach and yeah, all that yeah, stuff yeah. right yeah goes into a into a, a timeline Manages to figure everything out and remember, and that's all the stuff. That's the, the festival. festival. Right. Yeah, and then she hops along with Shimpei. She hops along with Shimpei. Yeah, right? yeah. And then, uh, uh. Yeah. Wait. Yeah, yeah. She's been traveling alongside Shimpei. That one at the beach 
is no longer there because she's the one that's been following Shimpei this whole time. Right, the because loops. the first time it goes back from the festival. Yeah. Ushio wasn't actually, Shadow Ushio wasn't actually with him. Right. But the Shadow Ushio at the beach basically got the download and then goes and finds him. So yeah. instead, we just have the fact that Shadow Ushio right now can teleport. No, no. Uh, no, no, because then, no, it's, because it's the, it's, it's the, that's... she's, 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 whatever you want to call it, she's not literally teleporting. She's piggy. I'm just using this as the way to explain uh -huh. what she's doing, not how she's doing it, and mm -hmm. not that she can literally go from point A to point B. Oh, I can pop five feet forward. No, it's the, she's literally just taking the time in which Shinpei is going back and being like, grab on and goes with him. She's not teleporting. She's basically just, like I'm saying, no, just no, piggybacking. No, no, she's, right. But if you're actually, if you're actually taking the Shadow Ushio from here and bringing it, and, and bringing it back with yeah. Shinpei, as opposed to taking the data and sending it to Shadow Ushio and then having Shadow Ushio like find them, right? That's that's two different things, right? No, no, of course it is. But she's she's piggybacking. She's not. I, I don't get what the. Even if she's piggybacking, what happens to the Shadow Ushio that would have still been there at the beach? That's her. That's her all along. No, 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 no. no. <sighs> okay, uh -huh. well. I, let's let's leave this then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. was a, it was an offhand comment of uh, trying to make a point in that something innocuous like that that doesn't really matter. If that's the only thing that the show would have as a potential plot hole, right? That's no big deal because everything else that it's doing is absolutely fantastic. Right, right, right. right. And I would say that that's one of those ones where because of the way that they've done this multiple times in the pre previous like couple mm -hmm. iterations here since the festival, Ushio very clearly does not have the ability to do uh, time looping yet. She's going to have it at some point in the future, which is how she then gets the um, the uh, the eye to uh, Shinpei. Wait, Shadow Ushio doesn't have time looping yet. Wouldn't it be that she already had it and now she doesn't have it anymore? Uh, yes, either one. It okay. doesn't really matter. I would say it's the it's the it's the kind of thing where. She could either have never had it um, in the, the beginning stages of things there. The idea is that at some point she gets the eye. Mm -hmm. And the eye, as we now know, is filled with shadows. So it's not the original. It's a copy. Right, right. It's something that then would be very easy to transfer from a shadow. Um, well, weirdly enough, I don't know how it gets transferred to Shimpei. That's something that the show is basically mm -hmm. just saying. That's what happened. We're not explaining that probably until the very end of things, or at the very least until much later. But the means by which she would have to be able to do that mm -hmm. is by having it be something where it's a, hey, what happens if in the middle of a loop, you take away your own ability to loop and give it to somebody else? Well, you in that whole state cease to be. Right. Right. Because you never loop back to the beginning, so... You're, right. you're lost in a parallel reality. Right, right. Yeah. That's that's just a that's just a thing that was done. Mm -hmm. That feels to me like the show setting up the end of the story where the character that has the ability mm -hmm. basically says, I went through all the iterations, I went through all the times, I tried my best to do this, we did everything that we could. I need to set up the final piece, which will then make all this work. Bam, there we go. Ooh. Pardon me, pardon me. Mm. There we go, it's done. And that's the thing that either happened before, but given that Ushio is still um um Ushio is still around here as a as a shadow, I think that that's something that given Shadow Ushio's current kind of path towards being the magical girl power thing mm -hmm. of, of yeah. all this story and stuff, that's gonna happen later that's going to happen in the future and that's when we're going to have the time powers are not limited to just the uh the, the looping and all that just stuff. the looping upon death because right. we now know that yeah there's at some point yeah. there's not going to be many rules attached to no. the time ability it's going to be the powers of a god yeah and and if anything that's that's one of the things that'll be that that's uh one of the things that'll be really interesting to get into and why i'm Really excited to see where this mm -hmm. whole uh, going back and observing the past thing will go, mm -hmm. because um, uh, the eye that Heine, she, I, Heine is just able to loop, and even then, it's because Sh Shinpei is triggering it. Right, Heine does not actually have control of the time abilities 
because if she did, they would have lost already, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. there's some aspect of it being this specific eye, right? Yeah, she can just find him. She can just she can just take the memories of everything that, um, like she exists through all parallel realities because she's tapped into the god, basically. Right. And the god is not dead. The god has some power. The god has mm -hmm. some kind of stuff going on here. And while there's probably very little, if any, um, you know, actual power in terms of like memories or anything like that, all she would need is the, oh, someone out there has my eye. I don't know where they are or maybe even who they right, are. Right, but I'm. But I'm, oh, I yeah. found someone that I marked. That could be the indicator for all we know that it's the. I know everything about whoever I've marked. That mark allows me to know that not only they have the eye, but where they are and when they are and all this stuff. And then it's the, cool, I can use that as a beacon to just chase the the, the little gnat trying uh -huh. to kill me all all throughout time and stuff. But again, this is a this is kind of a new stage, a new arc of the story yes. where we're introducing uh, a new perspective into the world building. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things now that are getting called into question. Yep. This is one of those areas in the story where it's actually very dangerous to introduce new elements that call into question a lot of the previous things. Right. It, because you want to make sure that everything is still consistent across yeah. the things from, that have been from introduced From the beginning of the far. show, yeah. And yet, it is still okay to do this on some level because the characters can have a limited understanding of the exactly. way things actually are in the same way that we have a limited understanding of how yep. the Hizuru Rinosuke situation works. Right. We or, don't really know. We just nope. have some things that make sense enough given our limited understanding. Exactly. You have it so that, you know, Shinpei doesn't know everything about how to use the eye. And so that way you can have, right. you know, the things that would have been, oh, why doesn't he just do this? Well, he didn't. He, he didn't wasn't know able, how to do he, it. Yeah, then. he didn't know how to do it then. You know, yeah, yeah. He didn't have the capacity to. Right. And that's and that's where probably the idea for a lot of time travel shows reach that point where it's like, OK, the protagonist finally figures it out. And and you don't have the show continue much further past there because because otherwise it would be trivial, right? Right, right. Yeah, and that's where and that's where I think the conflict of this story is headed towards something with Heine being an in for the protagonist because not only on a meta sense she's a cute you know anime girl, mm -hmm. but also we have multiple arms and extensions of the god being now which gives us many different types of antagonists, even though they all serve essentially one great overlord being right. that is not any of them, but is still, they're all, yeah. they're all in the hands. Of, I, I, the, the, uh, the forearm shadow like on the one hand, it seems like it could totally be, um, uh, Hiroko mm. or like an extension of Hiroko or a person. <laughs> Or, or potentially a person, but there's the whole no data thing. Right, the right? no data thing is weird. Which which is weird, yeah. which makes me think that it, it either is Hiroko or it is a direct creation of Hiroko, mm -hmm. not based on a person or anything like that. Right. And it and it was its its captain, its its guard dog, its whatever, mm -hmm. right? Um, because given that it's it seems like it's shifting towards the idea that it will be Hiroko that's the end antagonist, mm -hmm. not actually Heine. Yeah. I want to start getting even yeah. if it's a slow trickle. Just that those little bits of like getting to know Hiroko, no oh, Hiroko, Hiroko, okay. Even in their, you know, in whatever unknowable god state they are, right? right? Yeah. So that, that so that yeah. that way, when Heine stops being the main antagonist, mm -hmm. it it I I feel like I understand still what we're dealing with, you know? Right. And I think that's why we're in a flashback right now is that we're going sure. to learn about Heine so that yeah. we can then learn about the ways in which Heine is separate from Hiroko because. Mm -hmm. Shiori is an interesting bit there in that Shiori is Heine, Heine. Yeah. just a masquerading just being in disguise, form, yeah. being in disguise. Mm -hmm. But it's the, oh, how is Heine able to be down there, you know, but still also um, using Shiori as the scout oh, eyes yeah. to go about up there. That, that, that ties up uh, something in the idea that Heine has... Uh, becomes right. somewhat of a vessel for the god. That's why Heine is being fed because it feeds Hiroko. Right. But it's the, oh, what has Heine got in terms of agency here? Yes. Is Heine captured? Is Heine just Hiroko it's, speaking to them all the time? Well, and, and it's the, once they free Heine or kill Heine, will that kill the god or will that just 
you like know, cripple the god, the god or yeah, hurts it, a god a little it's bit. It's cut off from this world or whatever. Right. Yeah. That connection is very important to understand. If, given that, wait, have, maybe maybe we've already talked about this and figured it out or mm-hmm. something, but given that Shiori is Heine in disguise, mm-hmm. but Heine is a shadow. There's no like real Heine body here, right? Like like or or is the body down there Heine's actual body? Body. No, no, no. Heine is a shadow. No, yeah, yeah. Even the even down there, Heine's a shadow, right? And that's why she gets brought the bodies and all yeah, that stuff can, to, you can to need... consume and be be right, fed right. on. Right, right. And know? and yeah, you can you can have shadow bodies that need f- no, right health. No, no, so no that's yeah. the Hishigata clinic. Right, right. Exactly. The world building for that. Yes, because yeah. once you once you erase the original, then it actually becomes like you know a functioning real thing and all that stuff. Right. right? But what I'm curious about. And that's and that's why they need Ushio to be able to go and erase the Ushio body because mm-hmm. then that yeah, that yeah. won't be a problem. But that means she's kind of a shadow that's able to make another uh, shadow, but not like the actual like darkness shadow, like another body shadow. Well, I mean, yeah, it's it's a it's an extension in the same way that when we saw Heine sitting down there, she had this massive shadow that resembled the long neck Elden Beast kind of shape thing of yeah, Hiroko. Yeah. To show that it's the, yes, Heine is a shadow, but this shadow has a shadow behind her. And that's the... Well, right, and, that, and hence the, that's the main body of Hiroko. Right, right, right. So it's the, oh, oh shit. Oh. What kind of stuff is she able mm-hmm. to do by being connected to Hiroko? I, uh, uh, right, but then also, well, because the, the thing that was then coming up in my mind as a result of that is, wait a minute, mm-hmm. could she theoretically create more than just one other shadow? But it's probably something where she has to actually fully inhabit the secondary mm-hmm. shadow right. senses and all that stuff and she's not doing anything down in the in the cave so it doesn't matter if she yeah, does she's that. bored down there yeah yeah exactly right yeah. okay yeah. yeah um yeah so this this discussion kind of meandered a bit but we have a lot of things this episode that are now kind of new info and things mm-hmm. that we're going to be uh going off of here shimpei and um uh, ushio are going to be going on a little bit of a days of the past kind of journey through time yep. but we had a bit of a cool reveal here in that shimpei's parents were not just alive back then yes so that means that the accident yes it did happen rather recently we, we we know that to be the case you know but also that they were nautical um archaeologists or something like that let me let me bring the actual oh yeah it here. was something very specific. and they were literally looking into the strange past of this island and scuba diving and we know that there's a waterway entrance to the cave where Heine is at mm-hmm. so yeah i i think it's almost almost confirmed at that point oh and also as far as uh timeline this is 14 years ago shimpei's parents died 10 years ago i believe yes, so yes. four year gap no no i, I I'm, yeah. I'm aware i'm just basically saying mm-hmm. that it's the uh yeah. Um, yeah, I'm thinking about diving to that point I mentioned before. Hitogashima has so much uh, unique history. I'm glad I moved here. And then, you know, she's like, oh, the food here is great, too. It's yeah. like, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. this is all Hizuru's um, memory, memory so, here. Right. And that, that's a that's a that's a wonderful way to have the protagonist be actively like observing mm-hmm. things. And even if they were to you know, realize like, wait, 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 that uh, actually, hang on, that sounds really important. Well, Hizuru didn't remember that, so. Well, you know. Hizuru observed it. Right, but like, but. It, she didn't like continue listening to that conversation, right? You know, so mm-hmm. so theoretically, even if Shinpei was like, actually, that seems a bit more important right mm-hmm. now. Nope, nope, you don't get that. Right, so in terms of what kind of stuff this ends up um, uh, giving us here, this is... This is quite wild. Now let me bring up the. What job did your parents do? They were. Yes. Nautical archaeologists. Yeah, yeah. Oh uh, yeah. shit! <laughs> so this is this is wild and scary because. No wonder they died. Like they died like, searching for the truth. Like this is some well, like. Well, my I parents mean, were involved without maybe even necessarily knowing. They could have been yeah. just regular people. Oh yeah, no, they're they're just like oh this this seems cool. And then it's like, oh, fuck, they're about to discover a secret hideout just at random. Okay, well, time for an accident, you know? Right, but then it's the thing of, did Shadows kill them? Did the Hishigata family kill them? I think Shadows killed them. I mean, that's a that's an obvious, like, yes, like, we can throw the Shadows killed them for sure. But it's the thing of where the beginning of this episode, mm-hmm. um, uh, very quickly after the OP, right. had the whole bit with the doctor 
yes. having a conversation yeah. on the phone with a person uh -huh. who was a boy at the very least. And the voice, I want to bring up something here. This mm -hmm. is a meta thing, but this is something that you do here. Whenever you have a mystery voice or a mystery identity of somebody here, uh -huh. and it's very clearly not someone that we know of thus far. Right. Or at the very least, we've never heard this voice before. Listen to the voice here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why are people sniffing around? He's looking into this. Now, yeah. here's the thing. That's a young boy's voice. Mm -hmm. He also calls this character a uh, mama's boy. Yeah, there's reference to like the parents and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But let me go and bring... Uh, Is it true that Ushio's shadow wasn't erased and is now missing? So they're talking to somebody that mm -hmm. either knows about the beach incident. Okay. In terms of things there. Mm -hmm. So we could go back and look at the kid that was all like, ha ha, you were pooping yourself. Oh, so, yeah. No, okay. There so you go. I was, we need I was... to know what they know, right? So in terms of it being someone that we don't know, that either means that it's someone that's going to be introduced very soon from a meta standpoint. What do you know? This is the first time we have Ryan yeah. Nosuke. I, I just wanted to bring bring it up here. We don't. No, 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 Ryan no. Nosuke would be like twenty six by now. I, I'm just just throwing it out there. Okay. But the other one that makes the most sense to me mm -hmm. is the kid that was making fun of the little girl. Oh yeah, I absolutely believe that that's who it is, and I think that's that's a that's a great like that's a great like recalling of that mm -hmm. because. The big, the big issue I, I was thinking here with this is you're not going to actually introduce a new character at this point in the story. No, you, like, you could. Like, like, I mean, you you could, but, it, you know, small town like this, you know, on an island, all that stuff, it would be somebody who we had seen We'd before. We'd see them, but we hadn't been introduced to them. Exactly. It's the same way in which the Hishigata guy is taking care of his shadow wife, basically. Mm -hmm. She hasn't been really introduced yet. We no, know about her. But we've her, seen her in the same way that, that we had seen him before we had been introduced to him. No, but this was the first time we heard her voice. Uh, no, this, no, no, right. For, for example, I'm basically bringing up the idea mm -hmm. that we had not heard her speak before this episode. Yes. And, and if you think about the characters that we have seen thus far mm -hmm. that are boys, that are young, that have a family... Other than that kid specifically, I'm not ringing any bells because the nope. only the only actual like adolescent males that we've seen on this island are So and Shimpei. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's right? why that's why I wanted to bring up the Ryanosuke side of things because mm. he was literally just introduced here, so gotcha. we can cross reference the voice and mm. see if there's a possibility here. Because this is the other thing that I think is potentially on the table here is that the big forearm shadow is actually a person because we but there would have been data right like like what would uh, be the point of that statement if if it i don't know you know that's that's something we've never seen we've never seen ushio scan a full shadow being and get data she's scanned shadows that are looking like people and gotten data no right but we've never seen something that's just the full shadow anyways right like like other than the no, experiments we, from the from the we've seen hospital. the babies We've yeah, seen, yeah. We've seen a we've seen a bunch of little little shadows. It's the idea of it being a child of Hiroko that's not got any, you know, cop. It's it, it it wasn't taken from a human. It's it was just a, you know, uh, it was just some kind of weird creation here. So I just wanted to cross reference. It's. Nah. No, it's it's now, it's even a bit with too phone deep. distortion. It's that's, a bit too deep. Yeah. 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 Even if somehow it would they, they managed to maintain child Ryunosuke. Nah. Right. Um I'm really curious what Heine's goal is with actually approaching Hizuru in the first place. Because given that this is when she has both eyes, right? Yeah. Um I think it's a genuine friend thing. I genuine think she's friend been, thing. I think she's been in the cave a long time. Sure, and that and that could be the way in which we establish the idea that eventually uh, she will able to be Nakamud mm -hmm. because this was actually a genuine connection. This was a genuine need being expressed, yeah. right? 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. I like that. Um, but yeah, cool new data to mm-hmm. then add into the swirling mix of stuff that is this show. Yep. So yeah. Y'all, thank you so much for watching this episode's reaction and discussion. If you want to see the next episode's reaction and discussion right now, though, go check out the link in the description below for our Patreon. You got an early access there. You can watch full-length timer reactions there, and all this comes with Discord access. You can chat with us in the community there about this show, about anime in general. And also be sure to check out my Persona 5 Royal Let's Play on Twitch. And if any of that interests you, we'll see you there. But until then, we're Semblance of Sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we'll see you all next time.